Hello, I'm Ted Danglemeyer with Danglemeyer Associates, and this demonstration is on mitigation of the charge device model, or CDM. Behind me is a representation of the charge device model. There's actually an industry standard that spells out the details. But simply put, what it's, we're talking about is the device becoming charged and then discharged. And here is an animation that illustrates that. We have a device sliding out of a shipping tube, landing on a conductive surface, uh, and triggering the charge device model event. What we have is the capacitance of the device and the impedance of the device uh, represented here. And the scenario is that the device becomes charged and then discharged through a contact resistance, as you see here. That's, you know, again, very simply put. What's not common knowledge, and is be actually is becoming more uh, common knowledge, is the fact that the vast majority of ESD failures today are charge device model in nature. Now, this is based on failure analysis uh, data from IC suppliers and their experts throughout the world, and it's consistently coming back that CDM is the dominant mechanism. In fact, what we're hearing is that 99.9% .9 of the ESD failures today that are analyzed in failure analysis labs are CDM in nature. That does not mean you can relax your human body model controls. They're equally as important. You need to do all. In fact, you really have to do the HBM controls to have a chance of mitigating CDM. And we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Here's an example of how uh, CDM can happen in the manufacturing process. And what we have here is a, a burn-in board that's being populated with devices. We very frequently find that as the devices are being put into the burn-in boards, uh, we get events or discharges taking place, as you can see with the event detector here. Very common scenario, the board, the burn-in board is charged, it triggers a metal-to-metal -metal contact, which gives you a CDM-like transient. It's a little different scenario, but the failure mechanism is much the same. Now, if we go to a manual operation, as you see here, you'll see there are circuit boards, metal fixtures, and metal tweezers. Metal tweezers are a very common source of failure, very high risk, and very commonly used throughout the industry. Not a great idea. To talk about the mitigation techniques, we brought back this schematic of the charge device model. The objective is to hold down discharge transients below the level that will cause failure. Here, we're saying that there are two techniques, two mitigation strategies. One is to keep the voltage low on the device. Very important, keep, maintain it with ionization and other, all the other commonly used techniques to keep the voltage low on your devices, boards, and ESD-sensitive assemblies. The other option is taking advantage of the surface resistance. With the right properties here at the point of contact, you can also reduce those discharge currents to a safe level. In fact, we find this strategy to be more cost effective and less prone to human error. Very valuable uh, thing to learn and the details of it are important as well, as you're about to see with this demonstration. What I'm gonna demonstrate now are mitigation techniques using that surface resistance property with tweezers. Now, we have three different types of tweezers here, a, a metal pair and two black-tipped tweezers. Now, these two look very much the same, but you'll see in a moment that they behave quite differently. For this, what I'm going to do, I have the event detector set to trigger the tone with a, when a discharge occurs. So what I'm going to do is take this insulator, charge it, place it on the plate, and then touch it with this pair of metal tweezers. You can see right at the moment of contact, we got a discharge from the event detector, recorded the event and the detection. So now I'm going to repeat that with this pair of black tip tweezers. Again, I'm going to charge the insulator, place it on the metal plate, and touch it with this 
pair of black tip tweezers. We still got the event. And you know what's interesting? If you, I don't, you can't see this with a video camera, but it says right on the side that it's ESD safe, so it must be, right? Well, it turns out that not all materials are uh, ESD safe, even though they look the same. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Now let's repeat it a third time. And again, I'm gonna go through the same process. Bring this uh, plate to a potential, the same potential. Take this third pair of tweezers, another black tip pair, touch the same surface, and no discharge. We didn't hear, well, actually, let me correct that. There was a discharge, but it did not trigger an ESD event strong enough to be detected by this event detector just a few inches away. Therefore, this tip has reduced the discharge current to a safe level for virtually all operations and all applications. Now, why do these two behave differently? Well, this pair is carbon loaded and there can be hot spots that trigger high discharge currents even though the resistance properties may be acceptable on the average. This pair is a homogeneous material made out of ceramic that will give you consistently reliable protection of your devices and very, very low discharge transients. On the site, you'll see another videotape that will illustrate this mechanism as well. But simply put, this is the way to go. Use high quality tweezers with the right static dissipative properties. And that concludes this demonstration and thank you.